Hello, hello, hello. Oh my gosh, it's scone day. It's scone day. All right, so I have figured out how to make a camera here and a camera here, which is quite exciting. So let me get my recipe. How is my sound? Does everything sound good? You can hear me clearly and okay? And let's make sure. Oh, web captioner, my old friend, hello. The cat came in just in time to yell at me a whole bunch while we're trying to do this, which is extremely helpful of her. Jeez, bug. Jeez, bug. Why are you like this? Oh, good. Can you hear the cat okay? Because that's very important, <laughs> I guess. It's important to her, I think. Um, cool, great. Here we are. We have a surface. We have ingredients back here. We're gonna bake scones. I'm so excited. Are you excited? Yes. Bug is excited. I think. Let's get all of our bowls and everything. We get a bowl here. And we need some measuring cups. Let's get out a measuring cup. And how about this one? Audio only because the clouds are being mean rude. I hear ya. They are like that sometimes. So rude. All right, we gotta get out all our goodies. And why do I feel like I'm missing something? Let's see, I have a box grater. I have a mixing bowl. I have, oh, hello, hello. Oh, I'm so happy so many friends are coming to join us for scone day. Let's see, do I still have a lemon? No, I ate all my lemons. Okay, that's okay. So, ooh, what about these little friends? I'm trying to decide what kind of zest. These are not really, nah, that's not very flavorful. Those little, like, cutie oranges. That's fine. This recipe, oh, hi, what's a scone? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Um, a scone is a delicious little type of baked good that uh, often is paired with tea and enjoyed as a snack. It is a, a British kind of a thing. And we're gonna learn how to make them. This is more American style than British style, but I will talk so much about technique. We'll talk so much about um, fat gluten interaction science. Uh, we'll talk about why we do the kinds of techniques that we do. And let me see, I think this light might be too bright and it's making this all washed out. Hmm. I thought about baking along, I wouldn't, baking with your dominant hand in a cast, of course, oh my gosh. There we go. That feels like better color. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that would be difficult. Womp womp. So this recipe I love because it can be either sweet or savory, and it can have anything that you want. Someone who pronounces it like scone. <laughs> totally, that's like such a British thing. A scone, if you please. All right, let me see. I have out my sour cream. I have, uh-oh, I have some milk. Oh. oh, Canadian, yeah. I get a lot of the, the like Canadian and British sort of overlap stuff that's really fun. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's do some almond milk, why not? That's fine. All right, so let me get my half a cup of, does everyone have the recipe? Does anyone need? access to the recipe. I have it pulled up here. Here is your recipe for you and it's all printable and everything so you can save this for any time and then for anyone who wants to come and show off their goodies uh, in our community discord in our snack channel you can go post pictures there later if you come and join our discord which is a very sweet and friendly place where People like to talk about snacks and cute animals. Yeah, snack chat fam from Discord. Good. All right, I'm mixing my uh, my stuff together over here. Getting everything ready. All right. Do we all have tea? Are we all like ready with uh, snacks and beverages? I'm drinking uh, the Courage tea from our new like Zelda collection. And it makes me so happy. That's my favorite one from the Zelda teas. But I also am drinking this like nice dark uh, bamboo aged poir that Greg at the shop brought some in to share. Mm -hmm. Tea after tattoo. Ooh, you're getting a new tattoo? Or is it a touch up? What's happening? 
yummy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's exciting. I say yummy about everything. Like, everything is something delicious that is exciting. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I've got two different kinds of tea. This is this is my tea du jour, courage one. It has yerba mate in it, which is very nice uh, for caffeine. Um, but it also has like a lot of wild kind of foresty flavors. The cherry bark, the wild cherry bark, and the cedar tips are so just like green foresty happy. I like this one a lot. I've been drinking it constantly. <laughs> mm. Oh, a new tattoo, a memorial for a friend that you lost. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry for your loss. A tattoo is a, a beautiful way to memorialize a friend like that. Big time. I hope it goes well for you. Apple blossoms are lovely. You got farmer blend because you're predictable. <laughs> and a farmer. Yeah. Loud song over there. You know, I've been pronouncing that. I have to admit, this is a... I've been working in the tea industry for literally half of my life. I have friends who are Chinese tea farmers. Uh, I do not speak Chinese, but I have like enough, a little bit here and there comprehension to, you know, kind of make my way and communicate. I have been saying Lao Kong for over a year since we first started carrying that tea and a very kindly older Chinese lady came. It is Tsong. She came in the shop. She said, tell me about your oolongs. I said, I've been loving this Lao Kong. And she said, sure, I'll try the Lao Tsong. She was so gentle about it, but I was like, oh, <gasps> devastated. I was like, oh no, slash thank you. <laughs> she was so sweet about it. I was like, fair enough. So I like went and I looked online. I was like different regional pronunciations. Like, will tell me what I'm saying. And like, yeah, yeah. That C on the front of there is pronounced like a TS, loud song. So I have been adjusting my pronunciation, but like, it just goes to show you, you know, the T world is so vast and so regionally diverse that you cannot possibly know everything. Oh my gosh, thank you for your resub, my dear. Mwah. I so appreciate having you here. But yeah, so I still learn things about tea every day. And I still learn that, I don't know, I don't know shit. You know, I mean, I do, but like, there's always stuff that I think that I know. And then I'm like, mm, 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 I didn't understand that correctly. Even after 14 years in the industry. Oh, hey, thank you for your Prime subscription. I appreciate you. So sweet. All right, darlings. Yeah. Oh, you always think it's Vietnamese. I could see that, right? Yeah. Um, I think maybe that's where I was getting that pronunciation concept too, but yeah. Oh, hold on. My web captioner stopped ages ago. Make sure we have everything that we need so everyone can see and hear and make it as accessible as we can. I'm still working on figuring out how to do web captioner more gracefully, but eh. Okay. All right. It's now 10 past. Shall we? I'm so excited to have you all here in my little farmhouse kitchen. Um, I can hear the birds and there's like bunnies eating dandelions outside and it's just a beautiful day. The blueberry flowers are starting to fall off their stamens, which is delightful. It means they're happily pollinated and ready for me to snack on them, which is a delight. I've been eating blueberry flowers all week. Oh, hello, Piantissimo. Welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here. Yeah, so it's a beautiful day to make some scones. We're gonna do it. Now, when I made the recipe for the blog post and took my photos, all the pictures you've been seeing me post about this workshop, have had bacon and cheese and uh, roasted pepitas in them. But today I'm gonna do a sweet scone. This recipe is so awesome because it can be sweet or savory with very little adjustment. You just kind of throw in whatever you want and it works great, so I love this one. Um, well, we're almost settled into the new house, Jaden. We're working on it. We finished moving in and then um, haven't really had time to unpack, so it's still kind of messy, but we're, you know, we're at least settled out of the old place. And I feel like that's most of the way to where we need to be. <laughs> All right, afternoon from Twitter, hello. We're about to get started on our recipe here. I have all of my ingredients gathered. I just learned this morning how to set up this dual camera action. So you can have both my face and also the, the technique here. And I hope that this is all nicely in focus and you'll be able to see everything well. Um, yeah. So let's try it out. I haven't done a, a stream in this format before, so we're we're gonna try it out. 
Um, yeah, totally step one. Let me adjust this a little bit up so you can see my face better when I'm, well, whatever. Uh, okay, so let's make sure we have all of our ingredients. Now the recipe says two sticks of butter frozen. Jaden was kind enough to point out to me on Instagram this morning that not every region has consistent like stick of butter. That doesn't mean the same thing in every region. Canada is up there like, what do you mean by a stick of butter? <laughs> like, ah, yes, eight tablespoons or a quarter pound or, you know, a half a cup. Uh, so there we are, that much butter. Now, I myself, I rock this Kerrygold action because I am in specialty foods and I have expensive taste. So I, I use like fancy Irish butter and I love it. And I get them in these half pound blocks. This thing is already two sticks of butter. Oh, I can do this. This thing is already two sticks of butter, a half pound, you know? So my recipe calls for two sticks. I'm using one big massive stick, a half pound. I can go back and edit that later so that it's more clear for international use. Um, so yes, we have a frozen, half pound of butter, which I'm going to put back because we're not ready for it yet. We have on our recipe next, two cups of assorted fillings. Dr. Boyfriend is out getting me more dark chocolate chips uh, because we ate them. This is, I only have this much left. <laughs> so I had to send him out on an errand to pick up more dark chocolate chips because we snacked on them. <laughs> and like, we have a full pack of milk chocolate, but my mother is coming over this evening for her birthday and I haven't seen her in a year and she requested dark chocolate specifically. So this simply will not do. So he will be back in, he may have just arrived actually with our chocolate chips. So that is very good. We'll have, what do we say? Two cups of our fillings. So he is here to save me with dark chocolate. Thank you love. Oh, extra dark chocolate. Oh. Oh yeah, buddy. That's what's up. Heck yes. Thank you. Great. Oh, Dr. Fiance, hi, says Steph. <laughs> he says hi. You want to come over here and say hi? There he is. It's this guy. <laughs> there he is. Oh my gosh. Good thing he's a doctor of getting more chocolate chips. I know, yeah, I really appreciate his PhD in going to get me more chocolate chips. <laughs> Yes, that's what we decided. He's a doctorate in fetching more chocolate chips for me when I need them because I snacked on all the other ones. So we're uh, a good, we're a good match. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, see, everyone says hi and that they like your hair. He says hello. Now he's gonna go hide in the office because he's shy. Um, <laughs> anyway, we're using these ones. I like this company. I like anything that is based in San Francisco and starts with a G for chocolate chips. So Wittard or um, or Ghirardelli are my go-to for chocolate. Yeah, do you have backup chocolate chips? Well, I do have backup chocolate, but it's milk chocolate, and my mom specifically requested dark, so. Here Deli Minis over there, fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Uh-oh, here come more tea family members. Dancing on the screen. Here we are. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic, so now we've got our two cups of assorted mixed filling, whatever uh, you want. Um, so that can be savory. It can be sweet. Just two cups of stuff. Anything you might want in or on your scone can go right there. We're just going to do chocolate chips and keep it pretty simple today. Dark chocolate is better than milk chocolate. I, I mostly agree. I agree most of the time. I'm like, there's got to be exceptions, but for the most part, yeah, I'm with you. All right. And then we've got our dairy. Now I have a half cup of milk here. And I did cheat a little bit. That's part almond milk because I ran out of cow milk. Um, and then I'm going to put in my sour cream. The sour cream is vital. Sour cream is vital. This is not an item that you can easily or gracefully substitute. If you feel confident playing with textures and viscosities, buttermilk will work too or uh, you can use, I suppose, ricotta cheese and a squeeze of lemon juice, you have to use something acidic. It must be. I cannot stress this enough. Sour cream is vital to this recipe. Okay. <laughs> the technique will not work if there is not an acid um, because of the baking soda, which we'll be mixing momentarily. So, we got our dairies. Oh, Kieran, hi. Yay, I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, we made those savory scones the other day and photographed them. Today, uh, I am making sweet scones, but it's the same recipe, just different filling. 
All righty. Science Greek yogurt. Fantastic. Okay, I love that multiple of you are using Greek yogurt. Yes, similar texture, also acidic. Totally works. Yep. Perfect. Great. Yeah, sour cream dated a couple weeks ago, but tastes fine. Fantastic. <laughs> That'll do. All right, now let's get to our dry goods. We need our flour. I am using all-purpose unbleached. Um, I know that at least one of you is using freshly ground flour. Uh, I want to talk about the difference between store-bought flour and freshly ground flour because chemically speaking uh, and texturally speaking there's a massive difference. Store-bought flour has been through so much chemical processing, so many different layers of processing. It's been bleached, it's been ground, it's been you know, hit with supplementary vitamins and things. It's been stored in silos and then like bleached and whatever. So this has gone through a lot. Um, store-bought flour <laughs> is, uh, look, I'm just going to say it. This isn't nutritional. This is store-bought flour's filler with like no real redeeming nutritional value. It's delicious, but, uh, you know, let's not call it what it isn't. It also is extremely easy to work with. It's pretty much just a paste waiting to be pasted. So it's super easy to work with. You can just throw your all-purpose flour in any old thing, your store-bought flour in any old thing. When you are working with freshly ground flour, what you, ex bug. What you exchange for the convenience is um, actual nutritional value. It's got a lot of protein, a lot of fiber, a lot of vitamins. Um, it <laughs> has a lot more flavor. It's also, shh, bug, Lady Buggington. I'm extremely busy. God, okay. She has so much to say. She's very helping. She's sitting there staring at me with like huge buggy like cat bus eyes. Oh my gosh. Yes, so freshly ground flour actually has nutritional value. Lovely stuff, great flavor nudge uh, however the hull on it the fiber on it is so unprocessed and so fibrous that human guts can't digest it very well unless it's been treated with an acid to soften the fiber first if you're using freshly ground flour I highly recommend that you grind your flour the night before toss it with some kind of an acid. You want to use a little bit of buttermilk, um, some lemon juice. You can use either the liquid that's in your sour cream or a really dilute sour cream, anything that has a little bit of an acid, any kind of like apple cider vinegar, and just sort of fluff it around on the flour until it's just a little bit moist. And then just let it hang out overnight. It can hang out at room temperature. It can hang out in your fridge. It doesn't matter. And that way it softens the it softens the gluten protein and it softens the fiber and it's a lot more easy to work with um, especially if you are working with something that needs to stretch and knead like yeast based things you really need to let it sit in its acid and kind of break down a bit first otherwise you're not going to get that good gluten window and your bread isn't going to rise as well in this case it's not that big of a deal because this is a quick bread. It's not glutinous terribly, you know, the gluten isn't a very important part of it. Um, and we're certainly not yeasting it. We're not trying to make it stretchy and fluffy like that. This is a different kind of situation. So your freshly ground flour, you know, it just might have kind of a rougher, more uh, like rustic texture when you're done. It might be a little denser, not as fluffy, but meh, if you couldn't live with that, that's cool. Yeah, we'll pre-treat sooner for fluffy bread. Yeah, totally. And there's so much information on the web about working with freshly ground flour. Um, I know there's some good books about baking with it, but also there's like a million blogs, uh, especially like the urban homesteading blogs are really on top of that stuff. Um, so there's a lesson about store-bought versus freshly ground flour that I feel like is very important. And thank you for using freshly ground flour and giving me an opportunity to talk about that. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, if you're using store-bought flour, that's fine. We're not pretending this is health food. Who cares? You know, it's just to be delicious. So I've got my two cups of flour here. I need a third cup of sugar. Yeah. COVID stay home project learning flour stuff. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I know too much about the flour industry. Um, clearly, I'm still using it, but I certainly prefer to grind my own when I can. All right, a third cup of sugar in there. Let's get out our 
baking powder and our baking soda. All right, so this sugar quantity, you can adjust. It's fine, you can put as much or as little as you want. This recipe isn't even fussy. We're not creaming our sugar and butter together or anything like that. It's just another dry ingredient. So you can up it if you want sweeter. You can reduce it if you want more savory. I like this amount. This one third in here is a lovely amount for kind of middle of the road. Um, this is the amount I did when I made these with bacon and cheese, and it was perfectly fine. This is the amount I'm doing for chocolate chips, and it'll be perfectly fine. So yeah, you can adjust to taste on the sugar front here, which typically, scientifically, doesn't work, but with this recipe, it super does. All right, our baking powder. Don't get your baking powder and baking soda mixed up in terms of quantity. They do very different things. <laughs> <laughs> they interact in very different ways with all the other chemicals. So two teaspoons of baking powder, significantly less of baking soda. Yes, bake more now. Yay, do it. Baking is so fun. All right, so baking soda is the item that interacts and is activated by um, acid. Baking powder is a leavening agent that functions just fine on its own. Baking powder is essentially baking soda with other stuff like activating agent already mixed in baking soda is just what sodium bicarbonate and it is designed to interact with an acid and puff up like um you know baking soda and vinegar it does that thing Oof. in baking very desirable for fluff yeah yeah you pre-measured good hey that's great it's called mise en place you're doing fantastic darling <laughs> the two cup of fillings can that include cheese oh i wish it would yes absolutely include cheese all you want Last time I made them, I uh, used cheese in my zest step and mixed it into the dough instead of in just the filling. If you do it in the filling, then when we go to roll them, you'll have a like a spiral of melted cheese, which is delightful. So you can decide if you want it mixed all throughout or if you want it to be just like a spiral, like a layer of cheese to bite through because that is also so yummy. So, you know, just kind of depending where you want to put it. All right. This is my little bit of salt and great. So we're going to mix all of our dry ingredients together. Oh, I forgot to preheat my oven. Ovens to 425. Yes, it is quite hot. And yes, that is a very important part of it. Yeah. And cheese inside and on top. Hell yes. We're going to put stuff on top. We're going to put so much stuff on top. You can do anything you want. Last time I mixed my egg wash with a little bit of melted bacon fat, brushed that on there, then put on my smoked paprika, roasted um, pumpkin seeds, and then a bunch of cheese on top of that and cooked it like that. It was obscene. It was obscene. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this feels like it breaks some law. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, great. So now we have our dry ingredients all combined in one bowl. We have our wet ingredients over here in a different vessel. We have some tea that I need to drink right now. Make me hungry, I just ate. Mwah. I'm doing it right then. Excellent. Okay. Okay, we mix separately until very well combined, say my own directions. All right, now it is butter time. So I have broken a million box graters in my life. I have broken a million box graters in my life doing exactly this. You need a sturdy one, a real sturdy one. I've had this one now for years and I haven't quite destroyed it. You need a sturdy box grater. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. Must be sturdy. You will break them. So you can also uh, cut your frozen butter into bigger chunks, freeze it in chunks throw it in like a food processor and cut it until it's very fine, it's not gonna give you as good of results. Um, the grating of frozen butter is the key to this recipe and the key to this technique. This is, I do this for uh, pie crust, I do this for um, anytime I'm just, anything that I want to be flaky, this is the technique for it. So I'm gonna use the big cheese side of this uh, and I'm just gonna grate the heck out of it and we're gonna hang out and talk because this takes a long time <sighs> this takes a long time so the key to this technique is to keep your butter as cold as possible until the very moment it goes into the oven so <laughs> we are going to grate it frozen 
<laughs> toss it with the stuff. If you looked ahead in the recipe, you know, you toss it with all the stuff, you put it back in the freezer. You take it out and do some stuff with it, you put it back in the freezer. And we're gonna do that over and over and that in and out of the freezer, keeping your butter as frozen as you possibly can, minimizing your own hand contact with it is the key. Because the difference between flake and crumb in a baked good it's like making cacio e pepe pasta. Yeah, fresh grating, all that cheese. Oh my God, so worth it though, so good. I love that shit. But yeah, so the difference between a crumb baked good and a flake baked good is the interaction between the fats and the glutens, right? So when you have your fats closer to room temperature or even melted, then when they interact with the flour, with the gluten, they actually form a little globe, like a little ball. They coat around it. And that's what your crumb is. It's little bits of gluten coated with fat. That's what a crumb is. However, when you have your butter cold, uh, then you get flake because it melts as it's baking and it forms layers between sheets of gluten. So you get the flake instead of the crumbs. That makes sense? That's totally the, the science behind that. So you know, the colder your butter, the flakier it'll be. The warmer your butter, the more it will be crumb instead. There we go. Using my cooking school uh, fancy pants education <laughs> to teach you about scones. Shwoop. All right. Yeah. So per recipe, what am I doing? Yeah, I think I said something wrong at the very beginning of this stream. I said that this thing was worth two sticks of butter. <laughs> Did I say this thing was worth two sticks of butter? Yeah, okay, good. All right, cool. <laughs> Correct. Whew, I got a little turned around there. All right, let's do it. So what's everyone putting in or on their scones if your hands are not busy? If your hands are busy, hang out. Just do your thing. But if your hands are not, I'd we'll love to hear about what style we're doing today. I know we've got some cheese out there. I know we've got some other choco chips. I saw, oh, pecan cinnamon, what? Yes, with your freshly ground flour, holy crap. That sounds amazing. Oh. I'm so excited to see everyone's pictures of their scones later too. Blueberries, chocolate, and zest. Yes, absolutely. Heck yes. And she'll make them jam inside dark chocolate drizzle on the outside. Mm, brilliant cardamom grapefruit last time. Frick yes. Oh yeah, butter's flying absolutely everywhere, 100%. That happens. That happens. <laughs> Teacup is dancing at me, like full Zemo style. It's really good. <laughs> Just off screen. Having a moment of doubt, I gotta count my tablespoons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is. Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make extra double sure I was counting right. Does Bergie like better? Oh, probably. <laughs> I'm sure he probably does. Oh, while we're grading, I feel like this is an excellent time to remind everybody that uh, we are having a teaware sale on the tea shop website and also in store this weekend. So if you've been like waiting for teaware stuff to uh, be less spendy, this is absolutely the time. And uh, yeah. I just feel like that's a good thing to do with my mouth while my hands are working. Teaware, yeah. So we've got uh, on the website at FridayTea.com, we've got like, um, let me see, this little press pot that I'm using here is one of the ones that we have at the shop. It's so sweet. It's got this little lid, double-walled borosilicate glass. We've got travel mugs. We've got the, the tea sack, uh, fill-it-yourself tea bag filters, um, little French presses, just anything that is classified as teawares and accessories in the store or online are all 15% off all weekend. So today and tomorrow. Yeah. Apples and cheese. Oh my gosh. Yes. You're new to the tea cult. Welcome. Yay. Tea cult. Yay. <laughs> well, we're so happy to have you here. We are 
quite friendly around our tea table. We love everybody. Yeah, so I'm over here drinking two different kinds of tea while I'm baking scones. I have uh, the Courage from our new Zelda collection that just came out um, that actually Greg, one of our crew at the shop, developed all the new Zelda teas, which is very awesome. It's his uh, second collection that he's released with us. The dinosaur themed teas are also Greg um, project and very cool, very delicious, very popular. Uh, and then my other tea is actually also one that Greg just brought in for sharing. It's not even one that we carry, but it's a bamboo aged poir that's just so yummy. And I've been drinking it for over 24 hours. I just keep re-steeping it over and over and it's just going and going. Yeah. The Zelda one is so good. So this is the link inspired tea. It tastes like you're drinking breath of the wild, right? I know. Yes. That's what I'm drinking today. I'm on my second infusion. Oh my gosh. Mm. I like it. <laughs> so good. It's the, the wild cherry bark and the cedar tips and ginkgo biloba tastes like petrichor uh, to me, as does yerba mate. And so having both of those in one place is like just good, clean, kind of altitudinous, uh, fresh air with a little bit of rain in it. I'm like, oh, oh, iced wisdom. Heck yes. I still haven't iced that one. I've just been drinking it hot but it's pretty. And I know that Tiffany at the tea shop has been enjoying that one iced quite a bit. Okay, so I finally got to a point where uh, I ran out of room for my hand on the foil. So now everything I'm grating here uh, is actually being touched by my hand, which is, you know, less than ideal for a project like this. We wanna keep minimum hand contact because we don't wanna warm it up too much. Um, fortunately, my hands are about as warm as a corpse's most of the time, so I, I do run extremely cold, so I don't really melt butter very quickly by hand. Um, the friction on the box grater, and like between that and my hand though, is kind of softening it a bit, so it's okay. Slimy fingers! Totally. I know, but I'm almost there. <laughs> this takes so long, but holy crap, it's so worth it. So friggin' worth it. To medium shavings for five years. Yeah. Oh, Teacup's been making tea popsicles at home lately. We have our little popsicle mold, and I had my uh, butterfly blend from the My Little Pony collection out as sun tea. And Teacup had made um, lemon balm simple syrup. So they mixed the lemon balm simple syrup and the butterfly blend sun tea and made tea popsicles. And I haven't tried them yet, but. Oh yeah, they're there. <laughs> well, I, my hands are pretty busy right now, so I can't really, unless you want to stand here and feed me popsicles between talking about technique. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, tea popsicles are great. They do form just solid blocks of ice unless you add some kind of sugar or alcohol content to them um, to give them like a crystalline structure. If you just freeze tea just as is, it's an ice cube and it's not like soft and fun to eat. Yeah, okay, I did it. I'm gonna wash this butter off my hands. Yeah, I wanted to make iced tea, but my glasses are in the dishwasher. Oh no. Oh no. Alright. Oh my gosh, I have to show y'all. So I uh, I realized that I was gonna need something to hold on to my engagement ring while I'm baking because my hands get messy. And uh, so we got. I got this dinosaur to hold on to my ring while I'm baking. It has little hearts on it. So it sits on the windowsill in the kitchen and it just like holds my little ring for me. And it's a little dino. So cute. So cute. Except now I'm mad at him because he was singing Someone's in the Kitchen with Dino at me earlier. So I was like, okay, now I have to marry you extra hard, but also you're annoying. <laughs> dinosaur ring holder. So cute. All right, great. So we've got our frozen five million butter. This always feels like it's way too much. That's obscene. That's obscene. <laughs> so much butter. <laughs> Dr. Fiance is kind of a nerd. He is also like, oh God, I can't with calling him Dr. Fiance. It sounds so braggy. Have you met my fiance? He's a doctor. I'm like, I just can't do it. <laughs> uh, yep. 
I swear, I'm just gonna call him Dr. Boyfriend forever. I don't care. Even after we're married, I'm gonna call him Dr. Boyfriend anyway. <laughs> Although I do love that, like, he not only knows that we call him that, he's really embraced it. And, uh, like, he made a TikTok account just so that he could, like, watch my content and go in the comments and tell people not to be mean to me if they're, like, cyberbullying me. And he made his username Dr. Boyfriend. <laughs> I'm a dweeb. He's so cute. Uh, started making my own iced tea. Oh, yeah. Half black tea, half lemonade. That's fantastic. That's an Arnold Palmer, my friend. We love that. Yeah, that might lead to some confusion. Eh. Eh, he's fine with it. <laughs> fine with it. <laughs> yeah, people can be confused. <laughs> or I might just have to actually start calling him by his name. <laughs> All right. Cool. All this butter. Oh, now it's getting melty. Okay. Cool. So we are going to just toss the butter and the dry ingredients together and try to, you know, keep the butter flakes all separated and try to interact with your hands, of course, as little as you possibly can because you want to keep it frozen. Great, now here's a big frozen butter flour mess. Ta-da! Frozen butter flour mess dress stay on. All right, great, so it was a butter lump. It was a butter lump. Cool, I'll put this in the freezer. Excellent, on top of the stock scrap bag with the chicken carcass and a bunch of pieces of onion in it. A freezer does a lot of good work. All right, I'm gonna have some tea. So we're gonna let that sit in there for about five minutes. So at quarter till three o'clock Pacific here, we will get it back out and do the next thing. Yeah, I got hooked on the ones that Starbucks makes and I was like, yeah, why am I? yeah, totally. You just make it at home. It's just iced tea and lemonade. That's it. <laughs> I've been doing that with um, jasmine green tea and lemonade, and it is lovely. So good. Oh, preheat complete. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna put my sugar and butter away. What I do appreciate about all the time, the downtime during this recipe, is that it's uh, it's really easy to keep your space tidy. You can just time to eat chocolate chips. Absolutely, absolutely. I like your style. Um, but also time to, you know, just like start kind of cleaning up, putting things away. So, uh, by the time your, by the time your scones are done, your space is clean and you can just sit and enjoy them. All right. Let's see. Oh, I found some sprinkles. Oh my gosh. There's some sprinkles in here. Maybe I should put sprinkles in. Oh, I got all kinds of sprinkles, but these ones are very silly. These ones are ridiculous. I think I used these in a tea leaf reading class, or no, a bone bone reading class I was teaching. It's showing about how you can you can read portents in scattered anything, and I got out these like Sailor Moon looking <laughs> heart springs. <laughs> I'm like, hello, check it out. You can read anything. All right, let's see. So since we don't need to use these dark chocolate chips, mm -mm -mm, I can eat them. Hum. Oh yeah, that's a very important part of the process. Chocolate chip snack, or bacon bit snack, or whatever, or whatever. Mm. I'm so excited, we're making enchiladas for my mom. Um, she's coming over for dinner, as I've said. I haven't seen her in a year, but everyone got their butts vaccinated, and you know, it's her birthday, and so we're gonna do it. And uh, yes, I am delighted, and one of my favorite hobbies is spoiling my mother with baked goods. Years ago, she used to live down the hill from me. I would, every Saturday morning, bake fresh croissants from scratch, fill them with ham and cheese, Nutella, whatever she wanted, walk them down, bring them to her still fresh hot out of the oven because she is spoiled and I love her. And to be perfectly honest, I was an unholy terror as a child and I have a lot of, uh, a lot of making up to do. <laughs> I was terrible. Um, and she's the best. So Dr. Elliot gets uh, gets whatever she wants from me, basically. And I love baking for her. So I talked to her the other day. And I said, okay, 
I'm doing this scone stream and it should be wrapping up about a half hour before you arrive for dinner. And she said, oh, excellent. So they'll be hot for my arrival. I'm like, yes, mother, for your arrival. The scones will be fresh for your arrival. And she said, excellent. What kind of scones are you making me? I'm like, well, okay, I guess now they're for you, <laughs> like specifically. So as I said, what do you want? And she said, I want some that... <laughs> I want some that have chocolate chips and some that are plain for putting jam on top of. And then she grilled me about what kind of jams I had in my house. So I had to make sure I had the right kind of jam. Um, yeah. <laughs> but she gets scones today and also enchiladas and frijoles y arroz y ensalada. So I haven't seen my parents in 460 or actually you get to go home. Oh my gosh, Steph, that's so exciting. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. You're going to bake everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, rose jam. Yummy. I like that idea. That sounds great. Uh, I'm going to need to roll some stuff out at some point. I need to wash a cutting board. We were, uh, we were uh, making enchiladas ahead of time so that I could finish the stream and just throw them in the oven and have them ready for her arrival. And uh, we used every cutting board in the house to prep these enchiladas for my mom. Now I need one for rolling out dough. All right, excellent, yeah. I live with my parents, anyone want them? <laughs> parent share. What if there was like a parent share program where it's like, I need a break from mine who wants to swap? <laughs> How do you feel about Cine questions while you are streaming? Oh, um, that's fine. I don't mind answering questions, especially in this like little five minutes where we're just kind of hanging out and chatting. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I definitely don't prefer to do name tastings. Um, as yeah, which I see already that that's not the jam right now. Um, yeah, when I'm doing other things, it just kind of takes a lot out of me. But sure, I don't mind answering questions. Yeah, Appenzeller cheese and choco chips, also raspberry jam. Ooh, put it on top while it's still hot. Mm, that'd be so good. I have um, the jams that my mother made for me last year. Blackberry and, and blueberry jam from Dr. Elliot's own garden. She does like it when I call her Dr. Elliot. She's got a PhD in forestry and she is a professional mad scientist. And so she does very much like it when we call her Dr. Elliot. <laughs> my abuela um, addresses letters to my mother, to, to Dr. Elliot. <laughs> which I think is very cute. Alrighty, let's see. This is probably good to go. Yeah, it's time. So we're gonna make a little well in here. Shwoop. Do you find it distracts or helps when you taste the words associated with cooking? The words scone taste odd. <laughs> um, so it's really uh, peripheral for me. Like it's, it's ever present. Um, I have never known a time where I don't taste every single thing that everyone is saying or uh, people's moods or, you know, the meaning or the implication of what they're saying all at once. Um, but at all, if I'm not paying attention to it and like dissecting it for other people to explain myself, it's all kind of ambient. So I, I do taste every single thing all the time every day and I am super used to it because I've been acclimated to it since birth. That's just how I've always been. Um, so I, I don't really notice it most of the time. Um, yeah. So like since, since, uh, I've been talking so much about synesthesia life all the time, it's, it's so funny, all this stuff that like, I think it sounds so much more dramatic when I talk about it because it's different from other people's experience. But to me, it's just like, eh, huh, it's background noise. It just kind of is, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really trip me up. Um, since I've, I've always been there. <laughs> yeah. And the song run through my head while I cook. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Or like if, you know, there, a breeze comes in through the window while I'm cooking. I'm just like, oh, cool. Now if there's a little breeze going by. Like it's, it's fine. Or like I can drink water and walk at the same time and it doesn't make me fall over, you know? Yeah. How was your synesthesia explained to you as a child? Um, as, uh, oh, you taste feelings and you, your body like rejects iron and uh, you have a negative reaction to St. John's wort, so you're probably actually just a fairy changeling. But also follow your bliss. That's groovy. Everyone's different. 
So it wasn't explained scientifically. We had no idea what that was. Um, yeah. I'm blonde, so I'm not sure if the drinking and walking thing. <laughs> Don't worry, my friend. I am naturally quite blonde as well. I feel you. All right, so I have formed a well in the middle of my dry ingredients and butter, and now I am mixing in all that sour cream and milk and forming a shaggy dough. I'm gonna smoosh it all around. Make a little shaggy dough. And again, we wanna keep it as cold as we can. Swoop. Yeah, I do remember when I was a kid, my my grandpa and I walking down by the creek and I said something about how some feeling tasted and he kind of looked at me and he was like, oh, okay, I get it. He's like, and it was like he saw what was going on and how it was different and he was like, you, you taste feelings the way that like a spring gives water, like it just was, you know, and he was like, cool, okay, noted. What was that? Oh, Kieran, hey, thank you so much for that subscription. You're a rock star. I'm so happy to have you here. Always a delight to interact with you. We have the nicest, friendliest people around in our little community. All right, I'm making a big mess here because there's a little bit of stubborn flour at the bottom of the bowl that doesn't want to be incorporated, and I'm not having it. <laughs> My hand is so cold. So cold but it's cool. All right, get all this off of here, back in there. All right, cool. So we've got a shaggy dough. It is all just a big lump here. I'm going to put it back in the freezer. All right, womp womp. There we go. Off, off you beast. Shaggy dough beast. Oh, and I'm wearing this cute dress, but the scraps are loose. They keep coming down. Yeah, when did you start learning about the science behind synesthesia? I was 17 years old, and I was nannying a little girl with sensory processing disorder. Uh, and I started learning about, you know, what she was going through and all of that. And synesthesia is just kind of right next door to sensory processing disorder. And I took her to a physical therapy appointment, and her physical therapist was like, <laughs> so you know how you and I just experience kind of one sense per sense like you know you hear something and it's just with your ears but like you don't taste it or like see it as colors in front of you or whatever oh. and I was like what are you over there experiencing one sense per sense like <laughs> what is that like that doesn't sound real and I said, no, when I hear things, I also feel it like on my skin. Yeah, you know, I hear it in my ears and I can tell that I'm hearing it in my ears and in my head, but I feel it on my skin as like different kinds of tactile sensation. And he was like, oh, okay. So maybe not you then like, yeah, that's okay. That's synesthesia. And so uh, he sent me to, well, he recommended that I talk to my GP who then sent me to a neurologist uh, who did a scan of my brain, put me through a bunch of tests that lit up different parts um, of my brain with different sensory input and they were like yup <laughs> when we put something in here it lights up way over here and you got both of these areas activated which is very cool so yeah my favorite source for learning about the science of synesthesia is actually my buddy uh, Dr. Joel Salinas who I met because we both got interviewed for the same podcast about synesthesia and how cool it is um, it was the uh, Northwest Nerd podcast um, but he wrote a book called Mirror Touch, and he is an actual um, like neuroscientist, MD, but he's also a polysynesthete. And uh, for Joel, it's like, he's got the Mirror Touch as his dominant form. For me, it's kind of a tertiary one that mostly kicks up when I'm really tired, but that one means that like, um, if you see something happen to somebody else, you feel it like it's happening to you. So having a hard time separating ourselves from other people's experiences, so like if someone, falls down and scrapes their knee I, I feel it literally physically like it's happening to me um but for me like I said that's mostly if I'm tired or under the weather or really stressed for him it's it's his dominant form like I taste feelings and words Joel feels every single thing that he sees happen to other people gnarly are you eating the raw dough yeah I super am and then I'm gonna wash my hands but like I had to test the product you know <laughs> anyway his book mirror touch is equal parts memoir of a young queer Latin boy growing up in Miami in a very traditional family and struggling with identity there. And also, you know, um, also like being neurodivergent and 
try and figure out why he was so different from everyone around him, like the experience of growing up like that in that kind of a family, in that kind of a situation. Uh, and it's also part like actual neuroscience for laymen, like really interesting analysis of how the brain does all these things and why it happens. So fascinating book. Highly recommend. It was, it's so beautiful. He's so good. All right. I'll wash my hands and we'll carry on. Yeah. I've run out of tea. Oh no. Oh no. That's so sad. A Travis tea. <laughs> terrible. All right. Great. Let's see. Okay. It's been about, yeah. My little red teacup badge brings me so much joy. It's tea lightful. I know, right? Aren't they so cute? I love our little badges. <laughs> nice. Not you. There you are, my love. All right. So it's been a few minutes. I shouldn't have put my flower away because I need it. We are going to start rolling out Autobots. Roll out. Swoop. <laughs> Alrighty. So we're gonna put actually a fair amount of flour on here. Do do do. Just you know, some <laughs> enough. Is that a a, a precise enough measurement for you? <laughs> All right. Great. And then we're gonna grab our dough clump and just thwomp it on there. That's the name for that technique. Go ahead and thwomp the dough right on there. Okay. And we're going to kind of combine with our hands and press at the same time. All right. All right. Ooh, yeah. And it, it can get kind of sticky on top. That's fine. But yeah. And you should definitely be able to see big streaks of that butter in there. Your butter is not visible when you're working with the dough in like big chunks like that then that means it's combined too much and you will have more crumb and less flake this feels very flaky okay there we go thwomp so i'm just gonna press it out into like a little a little rectangle um you can definitely use a rolling pin if you want i just don't bother and also i don't know where mine is i just moved so just use my hands or like a kombucha bottle or whatever you know <laughs> it's soft enough that it's okay all right great and we are going to all right fold it in third see i took one side over and then the other side over this is halfway to uh what's called lamination which is how croissants are made another flaky pastry like that in lamination, true lamination, you would be putting butter, a layer of butter spread in there before we folded it. And then you would be like pressing it over and over and over. So you'd be making a million folds of sheets of butter in there. And that's how like that kind of flaky pastry is done. This is a quick bread. We're not doing it like that. So this is kind of lamination, but not quite. So we're going to make it into a tri-folded little buddy there. And again, back in the freezer. I not even bother to wash my hands this time. I'm just going to hang out. Blech. Goo hands. Yeah. So let me see. I'm going to double check our recipe. I can smell my cast iron curing in the oven. I uh, just, you know, was cooking enchiladas. And so there's a cast iron, uh, like, comal in there with fresh oil on it curing. I can smell it. All right. So we are going to do that again one more time after this. We're going to take it out flatten it again, fold it again, put it back in for five more minutes. And then we get to do the fun thing with the toppings, which is exciting. <laughs> These are so fun. And I have to, oh, I should go and grab, I got a three tiered tea tray at a local shop that does like um, high tea and afternoon tea service and like cream teas and things. So proper like sit down tea service. They're just uh, in the next town north of us up here in Bothell. And, uh, and they sell all the little goodies that they do with their tea service there in their store, including these darling trays that the proprietress makes herself. And I'm going to absolutely serve my scones on mine later. What are you adding besides the chocolate chips? Nothing to mine. Nothing to mine. Although I am going to top them with, I'm going to do some with like these cute little sprinkles just because I think it's silly and my mom will roll her eyes. But uh, mostly I'm going to use raw sugar on the top of mine. And I think that'll be lovely. But I'm going to keep it simple and just do chocolate chips for this batch. Um, and I'm going to be doing some of them, well, 
I'm going to be doing some of them plain and some of them with chocolate chips because that was specifically what Madame herself requested, her royal hiney. Uh, so yes, but let me go grab my tray to show you. three-tiered tray like this all handmade and look how sweet look at that thing is that the cutest so I picked this up from this little shop just the next neighborhood up from me the next little town up adorable she makes these herself it's just little china and she just pokes a hole through them and puts a little stand on there so cute oh, so I'm gonna serve mine on here and I think I might get my jam and put it in cute little cups and I know that I have some butter that is already softened. So as I'm getting ready to do the next round here, I might even like make some cute little side cups. Right? And if I put little toppings here for the jam and then like put the, put the scones there. Oh. So cute, or K-cute, as we like to say. I've got Jesse saying K-cute. <laughs> Cinnamon would taste great with chocolate, absolutely. Cinnamon and chocolate are always a good combo. I agree, let's see, I don't want blackberry, I want blueberry, yeah. That would be super good though. And maybe I'll, ooh, maybe I'll mix a little cinnamon in with the raw sugar and put it on top. That could be good, I like that idea. Oh, come on now. Mmm, Mama's homemade blueberry jam. She's so funny. She was interrogating me about what kind of jam I had around for putting on scones, but I think she just mostly was checking in to make sure that I had sufficient jam. Really? She's like, what kind of jam do you have? Do you have blueberry jam? And I said, I don't know. I think so. And I said, yes, I found blueberry jam. And she said, tell me all your kinds of jam. So I have blueberry and blackberry. And she said, what, no raspberry? I'm like, you asked about blueberry. What are you talking about? She said, I'll bring some. Okay. Okay, thanks, Mom. <laughs> So we've got mom's blueberry jam. Mm, holy crap. Oh, I forgot blueberry jam is my second favorite jam. Second only to apricot. Mm, apricot, blueberry, blackberry. And then, I don't know after that. And then after that, I think jam, I can kind of take it or leave it and I like other kinds of preserves, like apple butters and, you know, spiced pear, compote, and things like that. Mmm. Who are you, blackberry? Okay, we'll put blueberry in the blue teacup, blackberry in the black. Ooh, currant. Fantastic. Good call. Good call. All right, we'll put blackberry jam in the black teacup, blueberry jam in the blue teacup, and butter in the green. You know, because what is butter if not green jam? Yeah, going with raspberry, fantastic. Hi, do you want a little bite of blackberry jam? Oh, no thanks, not right now, but oh. thank you. Oh, man. It's you go. Mm. Do you prefer jam or jelly? Mm. I like jam, because I like it to have chunks and seeds and stuff. And jelly is, oh, hello. Jelly's all strained, right? That's the difference. Oh, ooh. Well, teacup just pulled this chocolate chip, which absolutely counts as one, and also kind of looks like boobies. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Hands finally clean enough to say we've got chocolate and blackberries for fillings. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Let's see. Put some butter in here. Ooh, now if I was very cool, I would whip my butter and put it in my little piping bag and pipe it in there. Then it would be more spreadable. But I just don't think I can be bothered. So... <laughs> No one tell my mother that I thought about it and then couldn't be bothered. <laughs> or do, I don't care. Uh, yeah, pistachio and mimolo mimolette. Ooh, I don't even know a mimolette. Steph is the cheese expert, for sure. That's why we call you cheese expert, Steph. That's your name. That's what the community calls you, I've decided. Hello, smell dog. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Pistachio. I'm going to do a big pistachio face. 
Oh yes, please, please bring some to me. I want, I want to eat it. I will eat every single cheese. I will eat every cheese you bring me. All right, let's check in on this friend. Da, 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 da. We're gonna do it again. I'm gonna flatten it out. And again, you can use a rolling pin. You can use a wine bottle, a kombucha bottle, salad dressing, I don't know, whatever. Ketchup bottle. Just listing bottles now. There we go. Cheese mites form the rind. Cheese mites, Steph, what? That's amazing. I've never heard of a cheese mite. But I mean, of course, there's all kinds of mites in this world. Great, all right. Here we are. About 12 by six ish. Brush off your excess. Since I don't know if you saw, I flipped it, but yeah, great. I'm gonna fold that way, Oop. and by about thirds again, like that. I can still see very large. Let me see. I can still see large, uh, like grates of butter, which is what we want. Excellent a little spank and put it back in the freezer for the last time all right great and then in about five minutes we get to do the fillings and toppings huzzah which means now is a good time to get our egg wash ready all right egg wash is the key to a delicious like top glossy kind of crispity yummy top of a baked good we love an egg wash for anything that we want to have kind of a glossy, crispy sheen. So, let me get, where's my pastry brush? There you, are. you don't have to have a pastry brush. If you don't happen to just already have a little pastry brush lying around, it's all good. You can use your hands, you can use like a spoon, a little fork, you can use a paper towel, it doesn't matter. You do not have to have any fancy gear for this recipe, that is very important. To me, everyone should just be able to do it with what they have around. All right. Great. So an egg wash is literally just an egg with a little bit of water swooshed around to make it spreadable. So I'm gonna put a splash of water in here. Just a little splash. Yeah. Cheddar and walnut, yummy. Great excuse to buy a few combos and do a taste test before you bake. Oh yes, I love that. Can you imagine? Clearly, you can, but like just like a little tasting platter, a little cheese and nut flight to test, you know, for scones. Great. Okay, so I am whisking this <laughs> in a very French style, which involves holding your fork flat like this and then kind of going down and up through, but doing it really, really fast. This is also how I make omelets. It just makes it super floofy. It's egg wash. It doesn't matter. This is just how I whisk eggs in a bowl but I figured it was a good excuse to teach you a fancy French egg whisking technique and it gets so fluffy. So also, if you're into omelets, mixing your eggs like that before you pour them in the pan is like the fluffiest freaking way to do it. All right, great. Now that's ready for us. And we've got all of our toppings here at the ready. We should drink some tea and in what, I think three-ish minutes, we'll be ready to pull that out of the freezer. The recipe just says combine the wet ingredients. <laughs> you updated to clarify egg, oh yeah, good thinking, thank you. Absolutely. So this recipe is one that um, <laughs> I would like for you to know. Up until I baked these to take pictures for that recipe and wrote it down, this recipe a week ago existed in the notes section of my phone as a list of ingredients, a temperature, and a time and that's it <laughs> that's all that existed so yes i can absolutely update the recipe to clarify which ingredients specifically thank you mm -hmm. this is one of those recipes that uh is such like a family thing that it's like we just write down a list of stuff and then a temperature and a time and we're like cool you get it <laughs> so, yeah so already this week i have um <laughs> reverse engineered our like really unclear notes <laughs> into something that people couldn't all understand. Oh, you got your kitten to sit on your shoulder. Fantastic. We love a shoulder cat. All right. 
almost ready. Almost ready. Okay, it's eating chocolate chips time. Yes, make sure you have all your fillings, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Okay, cool, noted. In my mind, I was like, you know, it's listed last because you do it last for an egg wash, obviously, but great feedback, thank you. It is not obvious to people who have not done it before. <laughs> Silly Friday. All right. Get my sugar. Okay, I've got my egg wash, my chocolate chips, and my topping. Toppings are listed first. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You got me. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow in my mind, that made sense. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Cool. Yeah, I will, uh, I certainly have enough feedback to make this much more clear <laughs> in the updated version. Awesome. Great. Okay. Ooh, I have a lot of smoke coming out of my oven because I am curing a cast iron pan. I also, um, my pan is going to be very hot to start with because I store my pans in my oven. I didn't have to keep that in there but I did. So now my pan is already extremely hot. This thing has been sitting in a 425 degree oven. So let me see. Did I write in our recipe that we need to line our pan at all? A line sheet. Good job, me. Good job. Mom's basically one step shy of a professional baker. Yes. <laughs> see, yeah. And I was a professional baker for years and years. So in my mind, I was like, yeah, that's obvious. But Thank you. I always want to know when things are not obvious to other people. That's always good. Always good to know. All right. Oh, it's time. We are here. Let's do it. All right. Brush some more flour just kind of gently on there. I always like to flip it so that the seam side is down. Let me shift stuff so I'm more on screen. So yes, this one I pulled out of the oven, the little envelope piece was up. I'm flipping it so the envelope piece is down. The added pressure will help to really seal it so it doesn't just go flip-flopping around on us. Um, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. It wouldn't have gone too far, but okay. And again, you can use, you can use an actual rolling pin. Uh, I'm a heathen. I don't use tools unless absolutely necessary. I got two perfectly good rolling pins on the end of my arms. <laughs> yeah, but this is also, of course, heating up our dough more than it's strictly necessary it'll turn out fine but yours will be daintier and flakier and floofier if you do not use your hands like i am doing and instead use an actual rolling pin but yeah i don't know where one is so we are going to make this thinner than we have before thinner and wider Previous batches were fatter and more narrow, but we want to have lots and lots of surface area for our goodies because this is the fun step, the exciting part. All right. Oh, yeah, buddy. Take up the whole damn board. Great. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and just put our filling in there. I'm actually only going to do half of mine because, you know, as I've said, her Majesty decreed that half of these are to be chocolate chip and half are to be plain. So I'm actually only going to be using half of my filling on the inside. The other half I'm leaving plain. You can do anything you want in here. You just want a nice, good, kind of fatty covering of stuff right up to the very edges. So you can put your cheese, your apples, your walnuts, your bacon, your whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Do scones have eggs sometimes? Absolutely. Yeah, there are tons of different ways to bake scones, a lot of different kinds of recipes. Um, I showed this recipe to Greg at the shop the other day, who also comes from a professional culinary background. And he said, oh, no eggs in your recipe? And I said, nope. Why are there eggs in yours? Weird. <laughs> Only on, not in, <laughs> for me. Great. Now we will have half with chocolate chips. See a nice thick layer, pretty much all the way up to the edge. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Yes. Excellent. Great. So, all the way to the edge. And imagine that it's all filled if you want it all to be filled. But as I've said, my mother said she wants half plain. Yeah. 
must have either a kombucha or a wine bottle in the house. I know, I drank all the kombucha. Tasty. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much tapatio at this point is the only kind of bottle I have in here. I got a tapatio bottle. Um, always. Okay, cool. I'm going to kind of gently press this in just to make sure it really stays secure because we're about to do the cinnamon roll thing. All right, so pick up the edges here closest to you and we are going to put a nice tight roll in this sucker and if it starts to stick to your board as mine is you can swoop, grab a knife or a uh uh help what's it called i can't believe i'm drawing a blank on this right now bench scraper yeah and to pick it up i probably should have flowered my board a little bit more so this wouldn't happen but it is what it is spatula that works yeah I love me a bench scraper I just don't know where mine are right now because we just moved I couldn't find them all right so we're gonna tuck and anything that tries to come out the side I'm curling the dough over these little choco chips keep trying to escape I'm not interested in that so I am going to just press the sides over them as that happens get back here you little scamp excellent and then yeah just as the dough tries to pick up, I am just insisting that it go back home. Great. Now we've got a nice tight roll. Find your seam and just sort of do 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 do. I'm just kind of along the edge there to just sort of tighten it up, smoosh it, smoosh it. Doesn't have to be tidy or cute. So we're about to do some more stuff to it. I do need more flour on my board. Escape. <laughs> All right flour the heck out of this sucker now great we're gonna put this right in the middle of that flour kind of tap the edges to square them off and you just smoosh it down just smoosh it so now it is about that thick about you know maybe yeah two fingers thick by a palm wide yeah and then as of however far down that goes these are such like house made measurements two fingers thick a palm wide and then whatever that is <laughs> takes up the board yeah great about a palm wide two fingers tall perfect now we're gonna go through here and uh since i just got dough on my knife i'm gonna scrape it through the flour a little bit to make it less sticky and i'm gonna start right in the middle and cut like that and then i'm gonna do it again here and here so i now have four yeah and then across into diagonals. There. Perfect. Now these ones are plain scones on the end here. It sure is rolled. It's going to be delicious and flaky, but there's nothing in there. There's no one home. These, however, on the end, these have got choco chips rolled all through them. Beautiful, beautiful. Now at this point, we will take our egg wash kind of really go to town here. Use as much as you want. The more egg wash you use, the glossier and more like a crackly the top will be, which is very elegant and very texturally satisfying. All right. Yeah, get this big boy on the end. The end ones are always like such, such beefy ones. I like them so much. End pieces are always ginormous. They don't have to be, they just kind of end up that way. All right, and then you can put anything on top that you want to now. This is a good time to be putting things on top because it's all freshly, uh, you know, moisted. I know that's the second time I've said that this stream. I've said moist twice, three times in one stream. All right, now I'm gonna get a little dipping plate for dipping mine in this raw sugar, this turbinado. Uh, and I think I will go ahead and mix it with cinnamon just for funsies to be cute. Go ahead and dump those things together. And I'm going to mix my cinnamon and my raw sugar together. Yum! And the choco chip ones, I'm going to just dip there. Holy crap. She is so spoiled. Yes. Great. And I'm going to start to line them up on the sheet pan as they have their toppings on. And I will show you, you know, they don't need a ton of out space. They mostly get tall. Yeah. <laughs> you stepped away to do some work and you came back and the scones are scone shaped. They are. 
beautiful scones. All right, chocolate chip ones get cinnamon and turbinado. Ooh, that's gonna be a dark one, yes. And then the other ones, well, this one's got like a little chocolate chip because it was too close to the edge. I guess this one's kind of chocolatey. This is a chocolate chip one now. All right, great. And the other ones, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make them Sailor Moon Sprinkle, which is what I call <laughs> this kind of sprinkle. It is just, it's just like little Valentine sprinkles, but it so reminds me of Sailor Moon. And I'm doing it in a moon-shaped dish. Ergo, I declare these Sailor Moon sprinkles now. Look how freaking cute. So the plain scones are going to get cute little pink Sailor Moon-esque sprinkles on top. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so silly. <laughs> so silly looking. Yes. But yeah, you can put whatever you want on here. You can put cheese, you can put seeds, you can put bacon bits, you can put... You know, more choco chips, anything. I'm just crusting this thing with funny little uh, sprinkles. All right, and then putting it onto the prepared lined sheet pan. Womp, this is the beefiest one. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay, so many. Yabza. Great, and now my pan, which is, yes, not too hot to touch anymore. Looks like this, laid them out. And these ones, they get more tall than wide. So you don't have to worry too much about them spreading and bumping into each other. They puff out a little bit, but it's not so bad. Um, yeah. And then you, yeah, you just kind of lay them out and they will get quite tall. Now these can go immediately into our oven, preheated, 425. All right. Now we're going to set our timer for 18 minutes. If your oven runs a little hot, set it for 15 and check it. Moon scone. Oh, I love that. A moon boon. Moon scone for moon boon. <laughs> moon moon's moon scone for moon boon. Who wants to have that theme tea party with me? <laughs> That's completely bananas. I am 100% in for that adventure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hilarious. All right, so now we set our timer there and I can start kind of tidying up all around. 18 minutes is a good long time. -er. Excellent. And then after that, I've got enchiladas to put in there too. Ha <laughs> So there we go. Let's just tidy up all this action. My mom said it was the fact that the egg said whisked with water that gave it away. It was an egg wash. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah, that's a pretty clear tell if you are whisking an egg with a little bit of water, especially if a measurement isn't given and it just says with some water, like that's an egg wash, 100%. I don't think I've ever seen egg whisked with some indeterminate amount of water as not an egg wash. <laughs> Alrighty, we made a mess and I'm proud. Alright, cool. There we are. Wowza. We're gonna have such delicious scones. It's part of the cooking show where you whip out the already cooked batch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. I didn't, I didn't plan that far ahead. <laughs> Plus, you know, we're doing a bake along. We're all gonna hang out and we're baking our scones together. If it was a very long bake thing, I probably would, honestly, but nah. We're all in this together, as they say in High School Musical, I think. Got egg all over, heck yes. I'm covered in flour right now. Yeah. Hee <laughs> hee. I feel like I probably could have made a gluten-free batch for Dr. Boyfriend, but I certainly did not. So <laughs> maybe next time, sir. <laughs> I didn't really want to take the time to grate that much butter to do two batches at the same time. I thought about making a batch that was, you know, all plain, a full plain batch and a full taco chip batch, and then I was like, that's so much butter to grate by hand. So it is certainly a, a high uh, input kind of kind of project, but it's fine. We like baking. Yeah. So oh, I want to show you my, yeah. Yeah, High School Musical, right? This doesn't work with almond flour, no gluten. So the thing is, I th it does work with gluten-free flour. Absolutely. This is not a yeast dough. It's not something that has to rise. It's not something that has to like form a gluten window. 
Um, it totally does work. They just kind of fall apart. I would up your liquid or I would throw a cracked egg in with your uh, wet ingredients as well because um, you need typically a higher liquid content when you're working with gluten-free flour substitutes. But yeah, it can be done. Absolutely, just pay attention to your texture and uh, if it starts to feel too dry and not hold together, egg, especially egg yolk, is going to be very helpful. Um, or like a little applesauce in the mix sometimes helps. Yeah, or a little oil. Favorite food is beverages. <laughs> Scone frappuccino. Mmm, that does sound crummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the recipes taste like egg. Oh, you poor thing. <sighs> yeah. Definitely. Let's see. Here's some of my sweet chocolate. This is all the super dark choco. Yum. Oh no, I think I threw away the bag of chocolate chips going. I guess I just have to eat them. Oh no. The thing. That's fine. What if I just mixed all the different chocolate chips together? That's so chaotic. <laughs> Got now the dark baking kind with the semi-sweet. What if I mix the milk chocolate? I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm in a little mood over here. Chaos. <laughs> I did it. Now there are three different, three different kinds of Wittar choco chips in one little container. <laughs> Excellent. Your cat's eyeball and your knife. <laughs> your cat is like such an active part of this. Triple chocolate snack. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, they're all like different sizes and everything. <laughs> nice. We more snack on chocolate chips than actually bake with them in my house. Anyway, we don't bake as often as I would like, but we sure do eat a lot of chocolate chips. So, yeah. Hi Jesse, I mixed all the chocolate chip kinds together for chaos. Do you want to? Do you want to eat them? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's definitely a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, milk, dark, and extra dark. <laughs> Those were the three kinds. <laughs> mm hmm. I got the thumbs up from Jesse, so I guess. I guess that was a good idea. <laughs> like, no one's gonna complain about three kinds of chocolate chips in a bin <laughs> hanging out in the kitchen. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna show you. As we're waiting, my other baking project of the day, unrelated to uh, this stream, but it's here. Extra dark is so good with a nice red wine, absolutely, or like a little espresso, a little cafecito. I've just been in a cafecito kind of mood. So like, okay. Look at this that we did. These are great. <laughs> These are gonna go in the oven next. Um, we made chicken enchiladas verde, por supuesto. And I gotta make, I gotta make Spanish rice, and I gotta make frijoles. I gotta do all those things. Yeah. So I guess the real question is. Yeah, I did. I know I used his real name. I know. <laughs> I just, after our earlier conversation about uh, what his name should be, now that we're engaged, I was like, yeah, I'll just call him by his name. It's fine. Yeah. I have to bring snacks. I know. Yeah, it's a snack stream. We're like really in the snacks. The question is, who would like to learn to make Spanish rice while we're waiting for our scones to be done in the oven? Because uh, I'm gonna have to do that anyway later. So I could potentially totally get some like uh, bonus, bonus cooking class content in here for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we like that. We like that bonus cooking class content. Excellent. Ah. Plus, to be real, I'm trying to keep you all here until uh, 4.30 because a dear friend of mine is doing a lupus uh, charity stream at 4.30 and I was hoping we could go raid her. So, trying to just like kick it for a while until we can go and raid my dear Ash who's doing a weekend long charity stream like event. Yeah. We wanted to go and support that. Drinking tea. <laughs> though at least oh, it makes amazing Spanish rice oh my gosh oh no I didn't mean to make you homesick yeah whoa chopped up hot dogs fried in spicy spices what that's awesome I don't put any hot dogs in mine that's great 
I just do a lot of spices and like tons and tons and tons of garlic and some tomato. Lots of onion though, for sure. Yeah, wipe all the flour off the laptop. I know, I know that pain, bro, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna hang out and uh, dice some vegetables while I'm waiting for the oven timer to go off. Yeah. <laughs> I think the neighbors are setting off a fireworks show. <laughs> what is going on over there? Oh, geez. Are your kitchens all starting to smell incredible? We're almost halfway through the baking process. And, um, yeah, it, uh, it's really starting to smell good in here. All right. Core my little tomatoes. And let's cut this one in half that way. It's a little tall. All right. Yeah. Sure, it's not traditional. Very Caucasian heritage. <laughs> sure. Well, the thing about Spanish rice, though, is like, eh. As long as it's kind of red and kind of has spices that are like warmed up, you know, like heated in the pan before it's like really done, done, then like, I think it's fine. <laughs> I think it's fine. We definitely uh, have, you know, our own family way of doing it that is certainly different from how other families do it. And that's fine. But wait, where's my lard? There it is. Okay. Yeah. I watch enough cooking shows. This isn't much different. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye, Wing. Thanks for hanging out. It's so nice to see you always. So nice to see you, Wing. Okay, let's turn on our burner. Swoop down like that. Yeah. Got my little jar of lard that's always hanging out by the stove here. Anytime there's bacon in the house, there's a jar of lard. Yeah. <laughs> there's lard involved or stuff about. So my mother, every weekend... Uh, cooks off a couple pounds of bacon just to save the lard for cooking with. Yeah. Cultural appreciation, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, my Mexican mama would probably be all about your mom's Spanish rice. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, she definitely has her own way of doing it, but also, I mean, I was very much raised with the idea of, like, Spanish rice just means it's red and has some stuff in it. <laughs> yeah. Eat the bacon too? Yeah, definitely. Definitely we eat the bacon too. But the lard is the important part. <laughs> the lard is very important. All right, let's see. Red onion in here. Toss cinnamon and sugar, yummy. Yes, we love. You know, oh God, I can smell mine so much. <gasps> They're beautiful, I peaked. They're beautiful. <laughs> we love it. All right, I use every knife in the house. <laughs> yes oh my gosh i can see the steam coming up from my oven through it's like a vent over the stove Ooh. yummy oh my gosh good more tea over there we've got some good smells in some kitchens i love it i enjoy our little bake along friendship stream i enjoy everyone who's just hanging out and watching and chatting everyone who's doing their own like i just this what a cozy way to spend an afternoon your family sounds awesome thank you i think so yeah i do i do quite enjoy my family they are very they are very silly and very fun yeah and half of them are basically space aliens you know so so that's always it's always an interesting time <sighs> i think i have that cutting board oh yeah i don't even remember where i got this it was probably like friggin like fred meyer or something a million years ago but yeah yeah I also have a similar one that is gray that I was using. <laughs> Do you have any siblings? I have three siblings. Yeah, I've got two older and one younger. I am the third. The third of four. There are many, I think I've got like 13 cousins or something. Like there's a lot of us. We are Irish Mexican. There are many of us. Many, many. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Meyer and Ikea. Oh, this might have been an Ikea one. I wonder. Yeah. So prep some stir fry. Hell yes, you did. Fantastic. You got some good cooking going on over there. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my siblings all live in different states from me. <laughs> um, it's For our family, it's just uh, my like my little nuclear family household and my mom's up here anymore um, in the Seattle area. And then I have a few cousins from both sides of my family down in the Portland area. And then most of us are in California. My older siblings are in the Midwest. Yeah, I've got some cousins in like uh, Tokyo or... Um, Scotland, yeah, just, we're everywhere. Hi, kiddo. More tea water? What? Friend robot is thirsty? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Giant bowl of veggies. Yummy. I 
Yes. Looking at camera and chopping. <laughs> I don't even notice. Um, so yeah, I, I was a professional chef for 15 years and I taught cooking classes professionally for a long time. You know, I don't even, um, I hold my hands in such a way when I'm chopping that I can feel where the blade is. And so I'm not, I'm certainly not in danger, but thank you. <laughs> I promise you I'm completely safe. Oh, sneaky little tomato. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, I really enjoy doing these cooking streams because this is very much my my comfort zone. Being in a kitchen is my is where I am the most comfortable and where I feel the most graceful. I feel like so many other places in life I feel totally graceless and like I'm so clumsy and I just don't really ever feel as confident in myself as I do when I am in a kitchen. So this is very much my uh yeah, <laughs> my home base <laughs> is right here where I feel the most at ease and the most confident. All right, this is a mysterious packet of rando spice. That is cumin. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Let's do that. Put a bunch of cumin up in there. And, ooh, how do I feel about some Aleppo chili? I like that. Womp, 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 womp. Just throw some of that in there. I like it. That extra filling that popped out. Ooh, save it for ice cream. Yes. Yes, please. Oh, is that a yes please for ice cream? Yes please. <laughs> well, I don't have any. <laughs> don't ask me. Ask the chat for ice cream. <laughs> Teacup says yes please ice cream. <laughs> you always seem wonderfully graceful. Oh, thank you so much. That is so sweet. I appreciate that. You know, and I think that people are always such harsher critics of themselves than other people are. You know, it's like uh, I was talking to to doctor boyfriend last night about you know, comparison being the thief of joy and all of that. And he was reminding me about the habit of comparing our blooper reel to other people's highlight reels. And, you know, that's so real. So like, I, I definitely see myself as like, oh no, people can see I'm so clumsy and whatever, whatever. And he's always telling me like, no, <laughs> other people see you as pretty graceful. You see yourself as clumsy. <laughs> and I think there's something to be said for that for sure. Yeah. I had extra feeling. Oh yeah. See how fast you can ship teacups some ice cream from all the way over there on the East Coast. <laughs> ice cream please. Ice cream please. Awesome. Great. I gotta toast the spices. Toasting the spices is a very important part because it makes your kitchen smell amazing. And also it makes them taste yummy. I just Hi. I just wanna say real quick, um, if anyone wants to send us ice cream, <laughs> you know where the tea shop Yeah, there's like, not a freezer there though. We can just When are the scones done? Three minutes. Up. Yeah, I know. We can also just get ice cream. Yeah, but yeah, but for free. Yours are browning? Okay, I would pull yours out. If your oven runs a little bit hotter, they're going to be done quicker. If you cut them a little smaller, they're going to be done quicker. Um, yeah, mine still have, now it says two minutes left on them. All right, so I've got my onion, my tomato, I've got some Aleppo chili, some cumin, and some chili powder. I'm going to put my special little house mix of spices in here. There we go. Smoked paprika, garlic, and salt. Yeah. I'm just gonna let that hang out and do its thing and get a little toasty. Awesome. You're using a toaster oven. I don't know what the conversion for that would look like, to be honest. I have not really used a toaster oven. Um, but it sounds like your heating element is probably much closer to the surface of your scones, which means that yours are going to brown on top faster than they will be done in the middle. So for you in future, I would recommend turning down your temperature by about 25 degrees, and then your cook time should be about the same. All right, I'm gonna let my rice kind of brown and toast, and my scones are done. Oof, yes, smoky. All right, oh, buddies, look at that. Look at these happy friends. <gasps> Cinnamon sugar on the top of mine like crackled, which is delightful. And these goofy little sprinkle ones are so silly looking. I really enjoy that. Excellent, now I would let them cool on there for about 10 minutes before you pry them off if you want to uh, maintain their structural integrity better. They are higher risk of kind of falling apart if you take them off as they're still that hot. chicken stock yeah chicken stock in my rice 
Now, what kind of scones did you make? I made half chocolate chip, dark chocolate, extra dark, and half just plain ones, but I put cute little sprinkles on top. <laughs> yeah, and then now I'm over here making Spanish rice uh, just because I was waiting for my scones to be done, so bonus content. <laughs> Oh, I need a bay leaf. Can't cook rice without a bay leaf. That would be silly. My bay leaves live in a, a jar and they all come from my mother's yard. Sometimes she'll just show up with like a branch of bay laurel. She's like, here you go. You need this. Probably she gives all my friends branches of bay laurel. <laughs> hmm. Dark Choco, RIP. <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. Those are looking good. Let's see. Now I've got my sweet little service tray here with my two kinds of jam and butter on top. So I'm gonna take this, hold it above my huh, pan of rice and we're going to pull these off. You can use a spatula. My hands are essentially covered in asbestos after years and years of professional kitchen work. I hardly ever actually use a spatula. I mostly just kind of grab stuff with my hand. So yeah, which is uh, a... <laughs> Alarming to people pretty frequently. <laughs> so do not follow my example on that one if you don't have asbestos hands. But yes, I'm going to put these on here. Oops, that one is crumbly. Awesome. Great. You know what? This will be a good example of one to look at. So this was a plain one that I put little sprinkles on top of for fun. Oh, and it looks like some chocolate chips snuck in. But you see how on the side you can see all the flake? And it, we rolled it up, and that's really evident as well. We get good crumb inside, but the layers are absolutely layers. This has layers of flakiness to it. Mmm. Yummy. Yum. Yeah. Whoosh. It comes apart in layers like that, which is ideal for spreading jam and butter and happiness. Spreading happiness on your scones. I need a butter knife. Being a little stubborn. Recalcitrant is my favorite word this week. That scone was being recalcitrant. Excellent. Ooh, these plain ones are wanting to fall apart on me a bit. I don't think I rolled them quite tight enough. But yeah, and then the chocolate chip ones, let's take a look at that. See, we put the chocolate chips in a layer and then rolled them up. Oh, golly, yeah. Oh, golly, yeah. My dad was like, can't you cut me a piece off? <laughs> Good. Oh, Heck yes, look at that. So it is rolled up in here in a layer. The ingredients that we put in the middle, our filling does get evenly distributed. It gets nice, even distribution all through it because of our tight rolling technique. So you don't have big patches where you've got a clump of filling and then patches where it's just plain. So I do like that very much. When we spread our filling like that, roll it up like a cinnamon roll and then press it like that, we get really even distribution all throughout. And the, the flakiness comes from that that semi, you know, halfway to lamination technique that we practiced there, where we fold it, freeze it, fold it, freeze it. But yeah, uh, very hot. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Holy crap. Oh, delicious. Mm. Yeah, these are just so flaky, so fluffy. So folly a party. I want to see. Let's just see what happens when we put jam and butter on them. Just really curious what will happen. You know. I want to find out. So we put a little butter, a little blackberry jam on this plain one. Oh, goodness gravy! This is um food porn. Yes. Hey. Hi. Yes, it is. <laughs> my kid is hovering like, oh my god. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha, Friday's mom, she ate them all. I know. All right. Like, oh, you were waiting for, oh, you were looking forward to scones when you got here? Oh, shoot, I don't know what happened. They all just kept falling down into my mouth over and over. I don't know. Okay. Jeez, that's good. Are you all eating your scones that baked along? Have you tasted them yet? And what do you think? How'd the texture turn out? 
what's going on over there. It's all well and good to hang out and watch me eat scones, but I also want to, yeah. <laughs> They're not broken in bite-sized pieces. It's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. They just fell apart. I don't know. All mashed up. <laughs> I was demoing technique, Mom. I don't know. <laughs> Think she'd buy it? Oh, jeez. Okay. There we go. You know, there's still six that survived intact and made it to the little tray, so... I think she'll be happy. <laughs> Dr. Ali is gonna wear my scones. I know, for real. You're like, excuse me, I was promised fresh scones for my arrival. Mm. Holy crap. Good. They look beautiful. I like to let things cool. <laughs> we may have slightly different approaches to fresh pastry, my friend. <laughs> I like to let things cool in my mouth. <laughs> I do a lot of like putting something extremely hot in my mouth and then like breathing around it <laughs> just enough not to burn myself totally yeah I like to dramatically declare how hot things are as I am eating them while they just came out of the oven and then everyone around me is like yeah a little bit mm -hmm. Jaden great call the cinnamon with that dark sugar on the on the dark chocolate chip ones, perfect. Oh yeah, yeah, yours turned out well. I see that melting happiness over there. Good. Mm. There's like all this butter collected underneath the sheet. <laughs> Definitely redo them. Oh good, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And I super look forward to hearing about how everyone experiments with different kinds of flour, different kinds of fillings, um, sweet versus savory. But if you're tasting them and you made them sweet, can you see how like, it's not, it's not too sweet, right? The dough itself is not too sweet to consider putting savory items in it, particularly if you put like salty things in there, like your bacon, like certain kinds of cheeses. Um, I would definitely put one that had like, you know, I don't know, like chorizo kind of crumbled up in it and rolled throughout and like a little cotija cheese on top, that level of salt, like, mm, it'd be so good in here. But then again, if you made yours savor to begin with, you can see how it would be sweet enough that with the right sweet fillings, it very, exactly, thank you, a very mild sweet. That's a great way to phrase that. Yeah, a mild sweet. So it's not too overwhelming. So it's versatile, which is awesome. Because then you can put anything you want in these suckers. They're great. They're great. Now I've got just this like ruin of um, stacked <laughs> scone. Mm. I'm like not even going to be hungry for my mom's birthday dinner. <laughs> Make some spicy savory. Ooh, yummy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, good stuff. You put yours in the Discord. Good, good, good. Let's throw that uh, Discord link up in here again. For anyone who is currently with us who is not a part of our lovely community discord where we hang out and are friends and show off pictures of our snacks and our pets and everything <laughs> it's like the chillest discord that i'm a part of i love i love it so much i love how we're just all like hanging out talking about pets showing off our snacks <laughs> yeah and teacup will help <laughs> for sure Oh my gosh. But like, now I've got this cuteness here and oop, can't tilt it too much to show it off, but I can here. Isn't that the cutest? Got my little tea tray here with different kinds of little scones, little jams and things. And now I just have to hide it from the pets until my mother arrives. Uh, no. To hide it from bad kitty Paco. He's a terrible boy and I love him. Oh yeah. Now I gotta put our enchiladas in the oven. Grab. Look at that. Lovely. Well, I was supposed to um, hang out with you all until 4.30 and then kick over a raid to my dear friend Ash's channel. Uh, but I just don't think I have quite enough content and I run out of tea. So it turns out scone class wasn't really a like three hour long thing. And that's okay. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and um, just, you know, kick it over someplace else and encourage everybody to go <laughs> and visit with Ash. Um, but I'm going to give her a heads up just so that 
if she happens to be ready to go live early, we can go and visit her. She's going to be playing a cute little, like, French bakery video game over there and raising money for lupus. So that is an awesome thing that she's doing. And that is, I don't know how to, like, shout out at people or I don't know what all this stuff is. Anyway, you know what? We're just going to call it a day. And then I'm going to host here if you're interested. I'm going to host on my channel um, later this evening, Ash's stuff. So you can come to my channel in like an hour and it should show you all of Ash's cool uh, fundraising stream that she's doing. So flaky, right? Oh my gosh, good. I'm so glad that you love it. Thank you so much for joining me for baking class. Super fun. And yeah, share this recipe with everybody. It's our family recipe. And I'm a big believer in sharing family recipes so that they are everyone's family recipe. So maybe sometime we'll do it with the secret family mole recipe that's not a secret that I share with everyone. Um, okay, I love you all. And I'm just going to take off. And I hope that some of you uh, come back and visit my channel when it's time to host Ashes because she's doing cool stuff later. But for now, I love you. And I'll see you around the internet. Okay.